Hi, welcome back to the channel and this is sewing 112 basic hand sewing stitches as you can see here I have this little cute pin cushion and that's what we're going to be sewing today we're going to learn four basic hand stitches there are many stitches but the four we're going to learn today are the most common you're going to use them most often and we're going to use all that to make this pin cushion I have everything ready I have my threads I have my needles let's get into the video and I'll talk you through what you need now for this project you're going to need a square piece of fabric it could be round if that's what you want it's just a scrap of fabric about five inches by five inches now if you can see here I also drew in my border lines this is just to guide me where I want my seam allowance to be when I join the two pieces together there are two pieces and then I also drew some extra lines in between just half an inch apart this I'm going to use to guide myself to put my decorative stitches it's always good to draw lines when you're just practicing for the first time so that you get used to sewing straight then you also need stuffing something to put in the pincushion I am using fabric scraps which I went ahead to cut into even smaller pieces you can also use polyfill you can use sawdust then I have my sewing threads for this I am using brightly colored threads so that you can see them clearly and they look really pretty these are actually rayon embroidery threads you don't have to use this you can use your normal sewing threads then I have a thimble a thimble is this little device that is used to protect your fingers while you're sewing usually the finger that goes directly under the fabric so that you don't jab it with the needle I don't I admit I'm guilty of not using this all the time but it's very useful to have and I've had this for years you also need small snippers or scissors and finally you need your hand sewing needles now talking about needles I have two packs here this is similar to what it might come in there are different types of packaging these are called rose needles rose hand sewing needles so I have them in two sizes I have them in size 1 and in size 6 well, I'm going to just bring a close up here now these are size ones the smaller ones and these are size six size ones are about two inches long and size six is about three inches long and it's also thicker for this type of sewing I recommend you use smaller needles like this so usually the rule is the lower the number the finer the needle the higher the number the thicker the needle that might not apply in your environment, in your locale, in your own market, depending, but that's the type of needles we find here. So what you should get is something similar to this, about two inches long, or one and a half to two inches long, just about that size. And then you could get a bigger one for other purposes. Use this for thicker yarn and use this for thicker fabric. If something really thick, but for everyday sewing, what we're really trying to do is mimic your sewing machine so you need something about the same gauge as what you have in your sewing machine which is something like this and in contrast to your sewing machine needle a hand sewing needle has an eye up on one side like this and the pointy end on the other and that's then you thread through the eye of course on that side so that's the difference in shape as opposed to your sew, um, sewing machine needle that the eye is also at the pointed tip so let's proceed to thread in these needles. Now there are two ways to thread your needle. You either want to sew with a single thread or you want to sew with a double thread. They are threaded the same way but it's really how you tidy up the ends. So first of all I'm going to try and thread my needle. I'm going to clean, make a clean cut on this end first. Yes, that's a clean cut. And see if I can just pass it through the eye of my needle. Right, so I've passed it through my needle. Now, when I say double or single, right now, once I pass it through, it's two threads that we're dealing with. So, the simple thing is, I'm going to pull out some. 
Okay. Now, if you want to sew with a double thread, all you have to do is make sure that both ends are equal. But if you want to sew with a single thread, I'm simply going to make sure one side is shorter than the other. So I have a short side here and I have a long side here. So that's really what you decide on. If it's going to be double thickness, go ahead and pull both threads to make sure they're equal. If it's going to be single thickness, make sure one end is shorter than the other. And that way, when we're sewing, we'll actually sew with only one of the threads where the other one is hanging. So that's really how you decide. And the thickness really depends on what you're sewing, what it's going to be used for, how durable, and all that. Now, since I'm doing decorative stitches, I am going to do a double layer so that it's thick and I can see it very well. And also that it's visible for you. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out some thread. Also, the amount of thread you take really depends on your project. And you want to be careful not to take very long straps that could get tangled. So I'm going to take something about 18 inches long here. And I will snip the end. So I have my first thread. The very first stitch we're going to do is the easiest stitch. It's called the running stitch. The running stitch is a temporary stitch. You simply use it to baste or tack things together. And usually it's for the purpose of holding things temporarily together and then you can pull it out. You can also use it to form gathers. I'm going to start at one of the inner lines. Now, I'm going to go from the back at one of the points there, yes. And bring out my thread. Now see what I'm doing, I'm going to turn it back. I'm just going to pull the thread till I get near the end, I'll leave a little tail. So I have a tail there, about one inch. I'm going to hold that down. So to secure this thread so that it doesn't come out, I'm simply going to go in the fabric. I may move my hand so you can see. I'm going to go in the fabric almost at the same point as I came out, like that while still keeping my tail secure. I don't want that to come out. And then I'll pull. Pull it sturdy and that forms my secure knot. I can do it one more time just to be sure. And that is my first knot and I'm ready to go. Now the direction you sew actually depends on if you're left-handed or right-handed. I go naturally in this direction. This might be the direction for you. So you try it out depending on what you're comfortable with. So what you want to do is just go, I'm following this line. It's just go in, keeping your needle in this direction. Go in and push out. I'm going to come out just slightly and then I pull. This is two thirds so sometimes that happens. So I pull and I'm out. Same thing you want to go in. You go a step, a step away and come out a step away and I'm trying to maintain the same distance all there. And you go in and out as the next stitch. Same thing, you go one step away, come out one step away, keep your needle horizontal, go in and out. And now, why they call it the running stitch also is that you can simply do this, you go in, you go out, you go in, you go out, you go in, you go out. And we can just pull all that and out. And finally out. Now I'm just going to secure the thread. 
same thing what you want to do is just go in I want to secure it at the back so I'm going to push it in turn around I'm just going to make a little knot try not to go to the front of the fabric so I'm going to go in go through my loop here we go I'm going to go through my loop here and pull that down this is my old nuts so I just have all my nuts in one corner I can go in one more time just at the tip there going through my loop and we are secure and that thread so that is my first layer I have my running stitch as a border now the next stitch we're going to do is the herringbone stitch and this stitch is usually used for hemming uh, it's also called like it's like a double cross stitch or a cross hatch or a cross hatch stitch but I call it a herringbone stitch and you use it for hemming and you can use it for decorative stitches now I already have my needle threaded I'm going to use this lines as a guideline because it crosses over two lines once again I will start from the back just to secure my thread just going to pull that and always just make a quick knot Try not to go through my threads too much. So, okay. I'm holding the thread at the back and carefully pulling. You really want to avoid getting a tangle. So that's one. I might do it one more time. Just so I'm sure. Holding that down. I think for my hand I have to turn this around so let's flip it so with the thread at the top I'm going to go in and out so we have one diagonal then keeping this as a straight line I'm going to go one step here going in and out once again my imaginary straight line if I cross it here that's where my thread will come out so I'll go one step go in and out once again it's going to cross over like this that's where it's going to come out so I'll go one step ahead go in and out and that is a herringbone stitch the idea is normally if you're hemming your trousers one end will be on the fold and one will be in the fabric so you go in this direction and it holds it secure when we start sewing we're going to put it to practical use but for now I want you to just learn the motions now if you look at the back you can see it's actually just like running stitches at the back so that's how you know you're doing it properly it should maintain this pattern when you're sewing so as you can see that's why I drew two lines I'm just using it as a guideline now I'm going to do on both sides of my pattern here to make it a border and I'll see you when I get back so I'm back I have finished my two rows of hair remote stitches you can see it at the back that's what it should look like now we're going to join 
our two squares together. We're going to join the two squares together. What we're going to do is put this side right side up and put this side right side down like this. And we're going to use a back stitch, which is our next stitch, to sew these together. So we go in and then we go out. Okay, like a running stitch, you went in and you went out. Now, but instead of going forward, you're going to go back to this place where you went in in the first place. So you're going to go back and then you're going to come out one step ahead of this thread. So I'm going to come out here. And that's one stitch. So we'll go back where we ended, come out one step ahead of the next thread, like that. And that's it. So I'll do it another time here. Once again, I'm going to pull the thread out of the way. Okay. Once again, you're going to go in here. You're going to come out after the previous thread. So we're going to come out here. So that's why it's called a back stitch because you keep on going back in, go out, you go in, you go out like that. So that is a back stitch. I'm going to finish the rest of the square and I'll get back to you. So I have sewed three sides of my square. I left one end open. Yes, my stitches are a little crooked, but I was in a hurry. But <laughs> anyway, so what you want to do is sew three sides all around and leave one end open because we're going to turn this the right side out. I turned it right side out and I went ahead and pressed it with my iron so it's flat. My stitches might be a little visible because I didn't make them very tiny but you get the idea. Now another thing I did, the open space, my remaining seam allowance, I folded it in like that. So you can see my two seam allowances, I folded them in so that I have a neat edge because we're going to use our next stitch which is a slip stitch or a ladder stitch to secure this end and it's an invisible permanent stitch so you use it when you don't want to see your stitches and you usually use to attach a facing to your main fabric or a lining to your main fabric but for now we're going to just learn how to do it but first we're going to stuff this with all the stuffing that we have so i have my stuffing and we're just going to load it up you can put as much as you like just to get it full next thing we're going to do is secure the edge of our pie here so this is our sewn pie we can adjust the stuff in later but just push it in out of the way and we're going to sew this end now a ladder stitch moves in or a slip stitch moves in the same direction like a running stitch. There's little variations but this is the way I'm going to do it first. I'm going to just secure my thread to the inner corner here. Okay, let's get a better angle here. We're going to go in and out. There's a fold here. I'm going to go in and out that fold. Like that, like you would do a running stitch. And I'll come down, I'll go in and out the next fold. And then I'll go in and out, up again. And I'm starting from, this is where I stopped. I'm going to start on top of that stitch on the fold. 
means and I'm meant to, I'm keeping the needle in the crease right in that fold so I'm going to go in and out there and coming down like this so that's the idea of coming down like this we're going to go in and out the fold at the bottom Thus, maintain the fold come out and then you're going up you're going up here like that I'm going to enter the fold up here so in and out that fold like that and what happens when you pull your stitches tight I'm going to pull my stitches now because I haven't been pulling them when you pull your stitches tight what you have is an invisible seam you see you can't see it and it's tight so I stopped up I'm going to see keeping this going straight I'm going to go in and out the fold what you're doing you're staying there's a fold here so I'm making sure my needle stays in the fold in and out in and out so one more time I'm going to go in and out my bottom fold you can see the thread up like this I'm going to go in and out my upper fold here pull and that is how you do a ladder stitch so I'll be back when I finish the rest of the seam so I'm just finishing up the last the last two stitches here and that brings us to the end of the pincushion and the video just going to secure my stitches like so and that's our pin cushion now you can shake out all that fluff and that's it and that is the end of the beginners foundation classes now you have your pin cushion sewn by hand do practice don't cheat don't use the sewing machine it's good to know the basic stitches there are many other stitches but these are the ones you tend to use a lot you have once again your running stitch or your basting stitch your herringbone stitch or your catch stitch then we use the back stitch to sew this together and finally we ended with a slip stitch or a ladder stitch which is an invisible stitch so it's very simple please practice and I'll see you in the next video when we start doing garment sewing.